Hello, Tom Lavecchia here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast. You haven't heard from me in a while. Took a little break. Our last podcast was August 1st, which is actually the birthday of my next guest and the birthday of my mom, who was I dedicated the New Theory site to. You'll see on the bottom of the webpage. With that being said, and we actually launched on August 1st, 2015. So that was our last podcast, our Breast Implant Safe with Dr. Travado. Check that out. And we're relaunching, and we have a whole slew of dope guests for you. So with that being said, our guest, our next guest, our current guest, went from zero to 300 subs. Subs are cool word for subscribers. I'm going to sound like a millennial now. Uh, and on YouTube, and is just crushing it in the game. I'm here with Jay Hills. Jay Hills, welcome to the New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me on this podcast, and I'm really excited for it. All right, so, okay, so we're going to cut right into it. So, YouTube, 300,000 subscribers and counting. That's a lot. Give us, when you first started, why you started, just like day one, what's, what, what did you do when you first started out? So, basically, I started in grade nine with my friend that were, like, close friends since, like, a kid. So, we started doing YouTube channels, started doing pranks, challenges, social experiments, but, like... That was getting traction in my city, but it wasn't getting traction around the world. So, and then just last year, I met up with some big YouTubers in my city. I started collabing with them. If you guys don't know, Jay Station, I started making a bunch of videos with him. He was appearing in my videos and I was appearing in his. And yeah, we just took off. The potion started doing good. I was doing pranks and a bunch of challenges and then Stromedy came along and then we started doing videos with him and we're like a trio you know we're just doing a bunch of videos gathering views gathering subscribers and we're doing what we're loving and we're doing it all together and it was fun all right so i want to dissect this a little bit so just to dissect and explain a little bit number one j station is a youtuber roughly five million subscribers which is a lot uh Stromedy, who i know uh, he's approaching a million subscribers and uh, Jay Hills here started out and he started working with them to basically collab and co-promote, right? So, but here's the thing though, that's a big ask. Like that's, that's balls going to somebody, hey, you have millions of subscribers, um, you know, what do we do? So you started out small, you went to some pretty big fish and said, hey, let's work together. So first give the advice to somebody listening who wants to start out a YouTube channel and wants to, um, wants to approach somebody to collaborate like do you pay them do they pay you like give me the logistics upon approaching when you're nobody and you're approaching somebody with let's say a million and over how's the best way to get them to collab with you so basically how what i would give you is i would say don't do youtube if you want to start off doing youtube don't do it because of the money don't do it because of the fame do it because it's your passion if you're doing youtube and it's not your passion, then you're not doing it right. Because every, cause for YouTube, you're going to have to wake up every day, think of video ideas, do like you record, film, edit. You got to do all that every day. And if you're not liking to do that and you're like gaining like 200 views and stuff and you're not liking the views and stuff because you're doing it just for the money, then you're not going to go far. But what do I say to like collab with bigger YouTubers and stuff? I feel like I got lucky with that. But like, I don't know. I just felt like I got lucky with it. And... I don't know, like, like what would people would do. Okay, so, so that's obvious. If you have a passion for it, that makes sense, right? Do it because you love it, and then the money follows. But so here's the thing, and this is where, if anybody's listening, for us Gen Xers, um, YouTube, the way they pay you is they pay you per thousand views. It could be a dollar, ten, whatever, whatever it is, right? Depending on what you're promoting, how your channel does, how many subscribers you have, and so forth. So the cool thing is, and this is again for a Gen Xer, this is this is foreign to me. YouTube can be a part-time job for somebody if you got a decent following, decent social media, media following. So rather than maybe scan milk at the corner store, at the grocery store, it might make sense for you to do a YouTube uh, channel. One, of course, if you love it, but two, it actually starting to rack up like financial sense. So give me for an example, how much do you make off of a 100,000 view video, how much you make off of a million view video, and how much you make off maybe a 3 million view video? So like a hundred thousand view video, you would make around like two hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars. Okay. For a million viewed video, you would make around like two thousand to three thousand dollars. Oh wow! Yeah, and for like a three million video, it would be like around like seven or eight. 
So, so you're at like 25 million views. It's fair to say you made about 80 grand so far. Yeah, something like that. Hopefully, okay. We'll put him on the spot a little bit, but it's cool. But he's only 18, so God bless. All right. So, so that part. Okay. So let's let's take quick inventory. So you you want to do YouTube's great. You you collab with some big names. Great. You find a um, well. That, let's get to the content strategy because when you said the potions. Um, the reason why I know about Jay and these YouTubers is my kids love the whole 3 a.m. challenge. You drink this potion and it makes you kind of act strange and that kind of stuff. And it's a pretty interesting genre. Anybody who has young children that watch YouTube probably know what I'm talking about. If you don't check it out, it's pretty fascinating. Um, but that being said, though, how did you what was your content strategy? What was your strategy as a creator and an artist, if you will, when you first started? Right. And then how was it now as you're developing with more subscri subscribers? So basically, go through the process. So basically, um, wait, wait, what was the question? Like, yeah, how did how what was your content strategy? You had a strategy, right? So you obviously went, uh, you you hooked up with these guys, you created a certain level of content, right? And then you grew as a artist, if you will, as a creator. And then now, do you just make up content as you go along? Do you have a six month plan? Do you have a weekly plan? How do you? How did you create your content when you initially started? What was your strategy, and what is your strategy now? And how how has that developed along the way? So basically, when I was blowing up and I was getting the big peak, I was doing these potion videos, and I was doing like more of these kid videos, that yeah. the dark web, and like pranks and like stuff like that. The people what they were liking, the little kids what they were liking, but and then like I feel like I grew out of it. Like I I did I felt like I just I I want to like inspire more people. I want to go out there and like like show like who I am actually not like doing these like potions and stuff but and then I was doing those and then I like switched it over into like more like real like um like my personality and stuff and more I felt vlogging. yeah like cool. more like vlogging and stuff and I felt like people like like that I was getting like half a million views when I like brought in like a girl and I was doing videos with a girl you know just like being myself on camera and i found out people were liking that so i was like might as well just stick to this because this is what i like to do you know like i like to do like like i want people to know who i actually am and like what i have like to offer you know okay so what is give me a range you don't have the exact number your best month of earnings give us a range on your best month check you got from youtube um the best month i got was um around uh Okay. It's all public. We can look this up anyway. Reverse engineer it. So, yeah, around like uh, twenty to thirty k. Damn. So that's a lot of money. Okay. So you can. So this is this is serious business. Now, do you do you earn enough at three hundred thousand subs to not have to work? Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. YouTube is work. Sorry, I'm gonna probably get some backlash from people listening to this who create full time. And God bless the can because I'm not that smart and definitely not that creative. Uh, but with that being said, though. Um, do you not have to traditionally work for an 18 year old well right now i don't feel like i have to work but you see like the amount of time you have to put in into youtube because like youtube doesn't come easy it's not like you wake up you upload a video now you got to wake up think of the video thinking of the videos like what five hours then doing the video then editing it and it's every day that's like a job you know that's like a big job that's like a big dog job you know yeah. like it's not like no working at a deli swiping carts and stuff you know it's like this is some serious stuff and it's serious business out here all right so so you're the creator you do your uh, own editing correct yes okay now i uh, if you listen to this podcast i do digital marketing i know like this youtube optimization is not easy the algorithms change constantly um, it's not easy. You just you don't just post a video and like even your subscribers listen. They need to be notified. It's a big task to get to even frankly twenty five thousand views, let alone a hundred thousand or a million. So when you create a video, are are you at a point where you're like, wow, the video was fire. That's gonna kill it, and it does. Or you create a fire video and you're like, damn, this sucks. You know when the at the 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 stats come in, are you at a point where you know what works and what doesn't? Or you st or, or are you still doing a lot of test testing? Well, so basically, my most viral video, the one that has 3 million views, I manifested that 3 million views. I, I came out, we're in a hotel room, I came out of the washroom, and I was like, ooh. So you came out of the washroom, what happened? 
and, and, I, and I just thought of the idea and I was like, yo, this is an amazing idea. And then it boomed. Like I legit believed it was going to get a million views and it did. It got like 3 million views. And yeah, and I feel like I know what works. Maybe you can manifest me win a lottery. All right. So with that being said, okay, so now um, you're at a good, a good subscriber level. Give me how long it takes to get to 100,000. Then from 100 to 2, then 100 to 3. So basically, I hit 100,000 subscribers January 31st of 2019. And then from January 31st, I hit my 200,000 subscribers around March. And then from March, I hit 300,000 subscribers in December. And Okay, so so first, initially, you know, the, the initial 100,000 came out hot and fast. The second 100,000 came out super fast a little bit of a lag nine months to get the next hundred thousand and respectfully you're starting to get back on the come you're on the grind you're doing well but it slowed down a little bit is 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 that because you slowed down or did you kind of hit the capacity of the young kids or did you change the genre um you started out really fast what caused the slowdown and what are you doing about it from a strategic standpoint well to be honest i stopped like i, I it, like it just hit me i was like yo like i don't know i just didn't feel like like i just had that break you know that you that youtubers have i had that break and i took too long and i feel like that what like messed it all up but now nah, like i feel like i'm back i know what i'm gonna do and i feel like i have a vision and it's clear and i'm gonna get back to like getting 100k subscribers a month and i feel like i feel like it's easy now well so so I, it's funny because i'm like mixed on this right like me as the old gen xer got him 44 now um, the old Gen Xer, I'm like, this ain't a real job, bro. You should friggin' be out there every day. And you don't, you know, when I was your age, I hate to say this, I hate to be like, when I was your age. But when I was your age, I had, like worked at like a pharmacy and like I literally like cleaned toilet bowls, you know, um, for like four thirty five an hour. So like on one end, I look at you and like, that's not real work, you know. But on the other end, as a podcaster, although it's much different, um, I don't get a lot of money doing this. It's really a passion to support the brand of NewTheory.com. Um, but really a passion of mine to really learn what makes people tick from different walks of life. We had billionaires on. We had homeless people. We had many different walks of life. Today we have a YouTuber on. Um, so it's my passion, right? However, to produce YouTube, uh, even podcasts, are a little bit of pain in the ass. Um, and from an economic standpoint, it's not worth it, to be brutally honest. If you looked at my p &L on my podcast, it's not great, but I love doing it. And friends like Arjun, I know Jose down in Florida, always reached out to me. Hey, when's your next podcast? And it's pretty cool to have people reach out, people that you don't know reach out. So that must make sense. Um, so, you know, you're a young kid. You know, um, um, a lot of girls reach out. You know, what do they call it? Cloud chasing. Uh, how has it helped you from like a social standpoint? You're getting like, uh, lay it a lot. What's going on? Well, to be honest, let me just start off with saying before YouTube took off, I was working at Starbucks. I was a barista. Oh, wow working at starbucks every day i wouldn't miss a shift like i was a hard worker from the get-go so that's why i feel like this youtube thing that took off it was meant to be but like working at starbucks i was going there eight hour shifts i used to take double shifts like crazy shifts i wow. used to do like grind it out but and then youtube took off so i was like whoa you know like i seen real money so i was like yo let me just keep on going with this and then with the clout chasing and stuff yeah there's a lot of people that don't like it's like this it's like people like let's say they're your friends but like they just hit you up because they want something from you that's yeah. what i'm getting a lot of like a lot of people that just hit me up because they like want something in return like i they feel like i i have to give them something back when did you that's a good question when did you start getting that like did you six figures of subs and people sort of like when do people start reaching out and started being a little fake and disingenuous like at what level or or is that starting now well, basically, people started being fake because, like, I was blowing up while I was in grade 12. So I was in high school and I was blowing up on YouTube. That's pretty big. Like, yeah. and especially for where I'm from, it's like a small city. No one's, like, doing YouTube. So, like, yeah, that was pretty big. Everyone was looking at me like, yo, like, they wanted something, you know. Like, it started when I was, like, going up. I went from, like, 1,000 to 3,000 to 5,000, 7,000. And people were like, yo, what the hell? They were acting like they were my friends or my best friends. But, like, to be honest with you, during high school, I didn't talk to nobody. Like, I, I stayed, like, around, like, grade 9, grade 10, grade 11. Like, I would have, like, a big group. But, like, when the years went by, like, it, went, it kept on getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And when it came to grade 12, I was legit chilling by myself making videos. I was on the basketball team. Like, don't get me wrong. I, was still, I still had friends. But, like, 
I just like like to stay by myself because I knew like like I don't want like fake friends. I wouldn't have like twenty fake friends. I'll just have that one real friend that's beside me and always with me. And interesting. So so okay. So that's interesting because it's just like anything else. Uh, people will tend to support you when you're doing well, and when you're not, they uh, they don't reach out until you hit a certain point. Right? That happens all the time. So so as an eighteen year old you probably have Gen X parents, probably around my age, uh, or a little older, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. Um, with that being said, though, is, you know, as a Gen Xer, like, hey, I, you know, I don't, I love my son and daughter. Um, if they want to be YouTubers, I, I, I would support it, but I would need like a plan B, C, and D in place if they don't meet it, right? So how did the conversation go with your parents? You just graduated, I think high school last year or whatever, and you're like, hey, I want to be a YouTuber. Were they supportive or was it like, Jay, what the hell are you doing? Well, to be honest, I feel like I got really lucky that stuff started taking off in grade 12 because, like, my dad's really, like, first of all, I love my mom and I love my dad. Like, they're very supportive. Like, yeah. they support me every day. Like, they check up on me. Like, they're not, like, those, like, other parents that, like, oh, my God, what is he doing? What is he doing now? Nah, like, they see that I have a vision. They know that I'm smart. They know that I have, like, something to offer to this world. So, th like, they're supportive for it. And yeah, they like they want to see me do good. They want to see me do good. But I told my parents I'm just gonna take a year off, like university or college, just just see where YouTube's gonna take me, see if I could go bigger and bigger. And yeah, they're they're supportive with it. And yeah, when the money's coming in, like no one's gonna not be supportive. You know? Okay, so you mentioned I guess like a little gap here or whatever. Like I gotta take some time between high school and university or within university, take a year off within. The four years, whatever it's called, gap year, I don't even know what it's called. Um, with that being said, though, my question is, you're now in January of 2020. You graduated, I guess, I'm assuming June-ish. You're halfway through that year. Right now, if it's June, right now, would you stay on YouTube or would you go to university or would you try both? To be honest, I have nothing against school, but like... I wouldn't say like I feel like like not to be harsh or anything but I feel like school in like it's just for like average if you're gonna be average you're gonna work that nine to five if you're gonna stay in the desk like, I don't want to do that I don't like I hate sitting in desks I hate working in government like like I don't want to do that for my whole life you know like well I'm gonna go to school for another four years and then work for another 30 years then retire and then and then just sit with my kids and then be an old grandpa nah I don't want to do that I want to live my life while I'm young I want to make money while I'm young I want to see stuff i want to travel i want to go everywhere you know i want to do stuff like i'm not trying to say oh when i'm 25 oh i wish i can do this now now nah, i want to do that all right now 18 like this is when you experiment with life around 18 to like 28 that's like the gap you have to experiment with life to like push yourself out there get out of your comfort zone that's when you got to make moves and start doing stuff for yourself you got to like Cause like I feel like people that go to from high school straight to like college now nah, they're just in the system. You're just gonna work a nine to five. You're not gonna like do anything crazy. But but I would say if you're going to school for like to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, yeah. and like something like very beneficial, then you should do it. But if you're going to school to do business administration and stuff like that, like that's such a waste of time. Like do something that you really want to do in life and attack it. Trust me, it'll work. I like that. So so like I told you, I'm I'm um I'm always torn because. The old me, who has a master's degree, um, is like, hey, you need to be educated, you know, helps you get the job, helps you think differently, helps you approach things differently, gives you a competitive edge. And I, you know, in corporate made, you know, really good money in corporate. And part of it was because I had the degree to get there. So there's that side of me. The other side of me is like, you're right for me. I punted my 20s, um, you know, and I worked all the time. And I wish I didn't work as much. And now I work to live, not live to work. And spend more time with my kids and my girlfriend and everything else. So I'm happy about that. But it took me a long fucking time to get here, right? Um, so on the other end of things, though, is I'm kind of like, you know, I agree with you on be experiment, have fun, you know, do stuff. But, like, there's a lot of shiny objects out there. Entrepreneurship, you know, uh, YouTube, all these things that, like, I know people that try this stuff and, like, they'll op open up a YouTube channel and think they're going to go around the world and they get like a 30 cents check from YouTube. You, you know what I mean? So, so what I'm getting at is I'm all for somebody experimenting from 1828 and I'm all for 
going after your dreams and being passionate. But the same token is you have to really live your truth and live in your lane. Like if you're going to maybe go around the world, try to, yeah, start a vlog or start a blog or try something that's going to make you money doing it. But if it's not making you money, don't go out and, you know, rack up debt. Don't go out and do this and that. You know what I mean? So like, so like, what are your thoughts on that? Cause like, I, I agree with you really quick. I agree with you. And if I'm listening to this, whether I'm 18 or 80, I agree with your advice. It's just that's, you know, you, I don't say you got lucky because you, you, there's not luck. You were smart enough to collab with some pretty big ballers. You were smart enough to, to utilize. I learned from one of my mentors, you use people, not abuse people. We're adults, right? If you don't and I have a commonality, we're not going to hang out. It's not friendship anymore. It's not high school anymore. So people use each other. So you use them, they use you. Just as long as you don't abuse people. So I'm with you on that, right? Where I get a little concerned, not that we have a huge audience, but where I get concerned or kids of the of our audience is they kind of fall for the shiny object syndrome. They chase down that rabbit hole. So when do you follow your dreams and when do you kind of do that? But when do you also get real and say, oh, shit, you know what? I still may need that part-time job at Starbucks or whatever. Okay, so basically, to answer your question, when I was working at Starbucks, I wasn't traveling. I wasn't doing that. I, yeah. I didn't do all that. I stayed at my house, public housing making videos and i blew up off that i blew up in my city like i did videos from home that got me to go on vacations i got me to go to state to state grinded i grinded it out that's what you got to do i'm not telling you to go travel oh i want to live my life i want to do this nah you can't do that you at the same time you got to like be cautious and say yo can i do this or like do i want to do this you know what i mean yeah. like like, if you have to work, like, at Popeye, Starbucks, McDonald's to get your checks to, like, make your videos, like, at home, that's perfectly fine. Because the thing about YouTube, you can make it in your basement. You can make videos in your basement. You can do whatever. You don't need to go to L.A. You don't need to go to, like, these nice spots. I'm just saying that comes with it once you start going up on YouTube. And the thing about me is, like... I'm not looking at like I don't have like 30 subscribers. I have like 300k and I have a plan. So I was like, might as well just keep on going. I'm not. I'm not like free loose goose. Like like just going day by day. Nah, I have like a plan and and I'm just gonna execute the plan. That's the thing. If you have like a dream and you guys like want to pursue it and actually want to pursue it, because I know there's a lot of people that like say I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be an influencer. I want to be a rapper. But and then when it comes time to put in the work. They're like, ah, I'm lazy, you know, like they start slacking off. Nah, then that means that wasn't for you. You just wanted quick money. All I'm saying is if you actually have the dream and you actually have the goal and you have the vision and your vision is clear, trust me, you're going to make it. All you got to do is put in that work and execute every single day and you're good. I'm telling you on that. I love it. All right. To conclude, um, let's just see somebody's listening and they want, fuck it. They want to start a YouTube channel. What are the top three things you need right away? at the beginning to start a YouTube channel? Well, basically, the well, for me, when I started, I was using a phone. I was using an iPhone 6, and I was pulling views. Like, I was, for my subscribers, I had, like, 200 subscribers, but I was pulling, like, 5K views. I was doing pranks with my friends. Like, everyone around my school were, were like, had, like, they liked it, you know? Like, you just got to be an entertainer. You just got to, like... I'd say, like, get anything that works for recording and, like, have it at least decent quality. Um, and you just have your personality and know what you want to do and just attack it. That's all you got to do. Like basically legit have a camera that's working and do what you guys want to do and you're good. I like it. I like it. Jay, um, you, um, I'll put a link to his bio, but want to get, help him get to 400,000 subscribers. How else can we find you on social media? You can find me on social media on Instagram. It's J J A Y H I L L S. J Hills, you know. You could um, also find me on YouTube, J Hills, and you can find me on Snapchat, uh, J Hills. And yeah. Love it, Jay. Thanks for being on the New Theory Podcast. I don't do this enough, folks. If you listen this far out, actually, either give a shit about the podcast or you're probably a friend or family of Jay or a fan, uh, can you please like? comment and subscribe to the new theory podcast on itunes or whatever platform you listen to so this is the new theory podcast and jay thanks you thank you for being on the show thank you for having me